how we doing hey so um thanks for t tuning in if you're tuning in to the uh first um i don't know tony's uh finding something to do to break up the monotony and get people away from the news etc and so on um so yeah uh, as i mentioned in the notes we are um moving our real estate live casts over to youtube and i thought well i've got to test some things so might as well put together this little thing that I've been meaning to put together as a live presentation and then came uh, Rona and I'm speaking to you from the Rona bunker um, but at any rate so um, uh, here we are and I was going to uh, I'm going to present a couple tips of what I do using my GoPro underwater uh, and then uh, use Final Cut X and a LUT to get really good results easily um, so a little background about me I was in the uh, real film and video business for I don't know 25 years directed shot some things I uh, was an editor I also taught at the Colorado Film School up until May since oh man I was about 17 years uh, I took a couple of years down but uh, and I've been doing real estate since 2003 so uh, yeah, now I have a scuba addiction to fund because I got certified 2018 from open water. And uh, so, yeah, and selfless, shameless uh, self plug here. If you happen to know anybody that's thinking about buying or selling a home, get in touch if they need a kick ass broker because, uh, like I said, I'll do a great job for them. Uh, but I have a scuba addiction to fund. So, anyway. <laughs> That's that. So, um, yeah. Anyway, uh, enough of that jazz. Um, if you're tuning in live and uh, uh, you go there and you're signed into YouTube, you can comment live and I should see them here. That's part of the, what I'm trying to test to make sure it works. Um, and uh, in a way we go. So, um, as a disclaimer, and a lot of my former students can attest, um, it will appear sometimes when I'm presenting stuff like this that I tend to wander and I go different directions, but at the end, it all comes together. And I'm assuming, uh, even though I have notes, uh, th this will probably be the same because I've been teaching that way since I've been teaching. So that's the way it goes. Um, at any rate, uh, the things that I'm going to be looking for on the test here are how well video feeds, what the audio is doing, some other stuff. So I might get distracted during the thing. If for some reason this whole setup crashes, I mean, I've got a monitor here, a monitor here. I'm going to be playing back video through an editor out to the YouTube land. So um, fingers crossed. Let's see what we can get done here. Um <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, to get started, uh, if you're thinking of, and you like to do video and stuff, one of the things I would tell my students back in the day was uh, um, get a Mac. You know, make your make your life easy. Um, I've I've edited on a PC, and yeah, some people say yeah, it's fine, but I can tell you, in relative terms, I get stuff looking a lot better and get to where I want to be much faster with a Mac and Final Cut X. So, so there's that. Um, the, um, now I got lost. Um, so let's, uh, start first with what the issue is. And, and this is part of what I got to get going. Um, when you're shooting video underwater. Um, and so this is a, guy did a demo I didn't do this uh, where the he tracks how the colors change at different levels and you can see they're starting to get desaturated as you go down deeper uh, they starts to go away so um, obviously if you're shooting f uh, video um, you got to correct for that somehow um, there's a, a couple of issues that that cause this and uh, first thing is um, you have to understand that color is like sound in the sense that it's got different frequencies and blue for example it's a higher frequency and it's 
doing this and it's moving faster and reds like this so when you get into water water is like a big thing that absorbs the lower frequencies faster right and so the blues cutting through um, the only analogy I can use is if you had a piece of plywood and you fired a bullet it would probably go through it okay blue frequency uh, if, if you threw a rock at it, the rock would probably bounce off. Slower, red, not as much. Um, and I know that some physicists will probably take issue with what I said, but that's kind of the simple way to explain the concept. So when you go underwater, the deeper you go, there's more water. It's absorbing more of the other colors, and blue is still getting through, hence why everything starts turning blue and monochromatic. Um, so <clears throat> when I first got certified uh, which is a story unto itself and if you want to see the um, find your scuba story some people said it's pretty funny I'll put the link in the comments um, but I, I was like oh man I came from the film business but I don't really want to be hauling all this stuff getting a big spider I know I need light down there I know it all I it was never into the still side that much and I'm like, if, well, if I'm going to be having to put a big rig together, doggone it, you know, I should be on a regular job and I should get the right stuff and get an Airflex and a big housing and get camera assistance and they tote the gear and the whole thing. So I was looking for a, a streamlined little setup and uh, I, I went through all sorts of uh, trial and errors, you know, trying to get a uh, buoyancy. This is my buoyancy test. Um, yeah, I looked at a YouTube thing. A guy used pool noodles. Needless to say, that didn't that didn't work out so well. But um, after creating a mad scientist workshop downstairs and uh, bothering my friends over at A1 Scuba all the time, which, by the way, if you're thinking about getting certified, that's the place to go right here in Littleton. Um, at any rate, so I tried a number of different things. Uh, back to the color thing. Um, so you got all the red being going away and so if you're going to try to correct it when you're underwater you need to add some red to the data right which, which this is a little filter so this is a setup i use it's got a, a flip seven dive filter i don't have the camera in here um i popped for a more expensive housing that lets me put the gopro 7 in without pulling the lens off which i have loved although it's a little heavier um and then, uh, and then I've just got a cheap pole, but it has, I don't know if you can see, it's got a ball head. So I could do things like this and instead of, and that way I could pan, actually do a pan and pivot right on the center point there versus moving the camera around. Uh, yeah, Permadonna film. Uh, guy but um at any rate that's that the other thing is i wanted it to I've, and i got links for these things i've got a little uh deal that screws in the bottom of this pole and then this can then click onto a retractor so it sits right here and then um uh, i've got another thing this is actually a little thing that keeps it snorkel attached to your mask and I put it on here and put the other part at the bottom of my BCD so when I'm done or don't use it I can just it's on the attractor and you can't see my waist but I can attach it so it doesn't go flying around um, but but that's my what I've read what I've come down to now I've tried all sorts of other things rigging this so I can get a light on an arm and 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 then I had another handheld thing and that was pretty cool i could get light up here put the camera there but then i can get some stability all of that was fine but by having the pole be able to extend out and you know i can get a little closer to some things and stuff so i've just kind of said that's my my go-to and sometimes i use a little shorter pole same drill it's got this thing going you know um, but anyway, so that's that. Uh, but when I first started diving, um, I had this little cannon, and it has the curse of auto-auto, and it took some pretty good pictures, and um, 
you know, but it it was easily confused. Um, it's five year old technology. I call this is uh, this is my slow class now. Um, it would get confused now. Um, as you'll see when we get into the Final Cut X, um, my GoPro can get confused, and there goes the fan, so bear with me here while I turn off the heat. Um, I forgot to do it. Details, details. Uh, otherwise, you'll hear a big humming going on through the, uh, through the whole show, so let me go here. Let's turn that off and turn that put zero, and okay, so that hum should go away in a moment. Um, so there we have it. Pretty cool. We got iPhone thermostat things. Um, so at any rate, that uh, uh, back to that little camera. Um, I was able uh, on the bottom left here, and let me get to picture. Um, this is a this is the video I did right after I got certified, and uh, down here on the left is what the camera would deliver. And uh, you'll see it was like all blue, all green. Um, it, it, you know, now up here on the right was where I was able to get uh, the color two um, using a variety of methods and different systems and stuff like that. And you can see even this is where the camera got confused everything's trying to correct and then it's making everything magenta so I mean I was able to do it now it just took some time uh, here is a big example where camera gets confused so it's like um, the it starts to overcompensate with the red and then stuff so I had to f figure it out but it did all right you know it just had low stabilization and stuff but it took forever to get the to get the um, um, color corrected. A combination of using After Effects, different plugins. You're going into DaVinci Resolve, which are all pretty sophisticated systems. So yeah, I was able to get most of it corrected. Um, now with the GoPro, uh, things got a little better, uh, but they have a number of different settings, and and so. I was able to get, and this is just some stuff from a Cozumel trip, um, where, of course, now that's just where the, oh, I'm not even showing it to you. There we go. Um, so, I was able to get some pretty decent images pretty easily if I had light. If I was, you know, shallow, once I start getting deeper and I'm on auto auto, which we'll talk about the curse of auto auto in, in a moment. Um, so, so there's, there's that the, um, <clears throat> this is well, my, once I first got the GoPro on our dive trip in 2019, um, camera flooded on the trip. So I had, I had issues, but again, I had, I had some good results thing is on the auto auto mode my results are you know maybe 10% workable and I was like well I needed a little bit more than that um, see I think this actually while I'm here I might as well show you this um, you can see the orange bubbles here that's what happens when you use a light under water which I'll get to in a second I mean I use um, have a little sidekick like here and uh, I've just kind of come to the conclusion unless I'm getting up close on something um, it, it, it's sort of like spitting in the ocean I don't know if that's a pun or not but anyway <clears throat> so back back to what we're talking about so first trip uh, GoPro floods I'm like all right didn't get really get a chance to test things second trip uh, we went down to Cozumel and I tried to uh, use all the different settings. Um, now, here's the here's the deal. Um, the uh, 
for in my world I'm saying here's what works for the GoPro get yourself a back scatter filter I use just a mid filter I don't switch it for deep or shallow uh, use flat color native white balance cap the ISO at 800 so that a lot of guys will say 400 because of the noise and I'm like well it, the, this filter right it cuts the light right cuts the light right so 800 is just giving me another stop uh, to to compensate for that so that being said this isn't really a, a tutorial on on the GoPro settings needless to say I've done a lot of trial and error um, and I call the using any of the auto functions the curse of auto auto um, which I'll get to and I'll show you what happens when GoPro gets confused um, so uh, let's dig into that I don't see any questions let's see the thing is people when they start thinking of Final Cut and all that stuff it's because it says pro that's like oh it's so hard it's so confusing I don't want to deal with it well I'm telling you it's a lot easier than it looks and and there's great tutorials out there on how to use a Final Cut X um, also you it just makes your life so much easier if you can cut on iMovie guess what you can work on Final Cut X it, it's not a not a, a real hard thing and and um, enough said on that um, I want to touch on something real quick the professional camera systems Airflex Blackmagic cameras etc and so on uh, if they're shooting raw 10 or 12 bit that 10 or 12 bit it has more data in the image file which means you have more flexibility in how you process it the consumer cameras the GoPro everything they're either shooting at HEIC or H264 they're compressed codecs I don't, without getting into too much detail um, it's just not as robust it's adequate it will do things but you don't have detail the cameras actually making up things that aren't there um, you know in the frames etc and so on however you can still get great results and uh, and you know life's pretty good so um, yeah there's also 420 422 color space 444 uh, the GoPro shooting 420. Um, for my students, you'll know what that means. For everybody else, that's a whole tutorial for another day, and that would take an hour. Um, the other thing that comes up a lot is, you know, the GoPros will shoot 4K, and uh, it, it requires a HEVC codec. And I got to tell you, just the test that I've done, now I haven't shot 4K underwater yet, but other than in the tests in the pool, um, but I noticed in the 4k when I go to do stuff to it um, the detail kind of goes to mud or gets mushy or gooey whatever you want to call it easier um, if the release is going to be watched on iPhone stuff like that that 2.7 K h264 so far now I reserve a right to re revise all of this after I can go shoot you know a bunch of 4k underwater um, which if Rona ever goes away that's next on the list and maybe that time I'll think to put things on the slate that I bring with me so I know what I'm dealing with when I get back but that's another story um, the results that GoPro underwater um, with a little bit of light 30 40 feet little filter on it man it's gonna do great most of the time uh, but it'll get trick tripped up man all of a sudden a little bit of Sun gets in the lens or you turn one way and it's backlit and it's beautiful and then GoPro just decides I'm just gonna smash all the colors and I don't know what to do so we'll get we'll get into that so let's get started um, how much time did I kill here I probably probably a bunch At any rate but uh, first thing you're gonna need um, to get started is what we call a LUT uh, and this is the one I'll be showing you today notice that it's free right free free uh, 
and um, it, it's not perfect, but it does an adequate job for a lot of things. So you, you would add this to the cart, and then you would download it, and what you get is a little zip file, and uh, that zip file has, when you double click it, it creates a folder, and in that folder is the LUT. Now, we'll get into that in a second, but that's the step there. So, um, once you have the LUT, and we're going to go to Final Cut here. Um, and let me get to my window. And uh, once I'm in Final Cut, um, <clears throat> well, I've already laid some effects on this clip. Uh, and so that's that's what comes in, right? That's flat, native, um, using the filter. Boom, that's what it looks like when it's affected. Um, you know, uh, unaffected, affected. So I'll show you how to do this as, as we step through. But to install the LUT, there's a plugin called Custom LUT. It comes with Final Cut X. If you just search Custom, it'll have Custom LUT. You drag that to it to your clip um, and for our purposes here I'm going to turn this one off to install that LUT that you downloaded and I hope you can see this you might have to watch it full screen I can't tell what resolution is coming through but I you can see I've installed a number of different LUTs some I created my own in DaVinci Resolve some I got from other people but I can choose that LUT and it's going to bring up a window and here I go to the folder where the LUT is and I select it there um, now I'm not I'm not going to do it because I already have it in my list but that's how you would get the LUT um, so the um, let me turn the effects off and I'm just going to clear all of the effects and we're going to start from scratch so you can see how how easy it is to get there. Um, actually, I'm going to leave those in. All right. So first thing I want to do and is to, since I shot native white balance, it doesn't really know what white is. This appears to be white. So I go here and I go to balance color. And it does sort of an okay job. Uh, I have a, I can also try to use the picker and it seems to do about the same so sometimes you need to switch between automatic and the, and the white balance and see what flavor you like now I'm gonna jump ahead here because the the when we apply the LUT it's gonna drop the exposure down like a stop and if you look over here and you're not familiar with scopes uh, in Final Cut X you can view the video scopes here and there's a scale uh, minus 20 to 120 and, and from 0 to 100 is 0 is black 100 is white okay so it in you'll see what happens when we apply the LUT is this whole what they call a waveform is going to shift down so I I like to do this in front and the next thing I'm going to add is just a color uh, board and I'm going to go to exposure and I'm just going to raise the exposure up a tad all right now you see it's starting to come to life right um, and and uh, yeah balance color and a color board is there so I've I've got some good color coming in now what happened when the, oh because my saturation um, that was another cheap trick that I would do if I didn't want to use a LUT I could go into the color board and just dial up the saturation and get to adequate results too so um, we'll save that for wrap up later at any rate so I'm just going to deal with the exposure um, my color tones and tints are the same uh, but now I've got all I've dealt with is exposure. I haven't dealt with the color yet. Um, now is where I would add that instance of the LUT. And if you take a look here, I'm going to go select the Protune LUT. 
and then it comes in if you notice what happened the exposure dropped down about a stop right so um, the other thing is it's very thick heavily saturated for those who don't know what this scope is it's a waveform it's checking the level of chroma uh, it's pretty saturated you might like it but uh, I tend to like to dial it when I apply the LUT I can dial it back and forth to flavor and then I still might want to go back and uh, I st you know I still may want to go adjust my exposure going back to the color board maybe I want the mids up a little bit a little more contrast um, maybe my whites are peaking uh, so I can tweak it there in front of applying the LUT now some people like to apply the LUT first uh, that's okay so that's kind of getting a good correction pretty easily um, and and you know it's holding up pretty good here that I might dial that in a little bit more and I might add a little more contrast um, and that's looking pretty good my whites aren't clipping um, life is pretty dandy um, and I'm gonna I'm going to show you doing the same thing again, non-underwater. This is from my uh, pie party. But the steps are, right, I'm going to first balance the color. Right, so that gets me to a white that looks okay. Um, I'm going to add an exposure correction, adding a color board. And I'm just going to pump the exposure up a tad. I got a lot going on in here as it is, so I'm not sure I want to push it that much. And then I'm going to add custom LUT. And I'm going to pull down my Protune. And then it's kind of heavily saturated, so I'm just going to maybe back, back it off a little bit. And I've got a pretty good looking picture. Um, if it's still too thick, I might go here into saturation and just dial it down a little bit but that looks pretty darn good and it didn't take me a month of Sundays to figure out so there's where it was there's what we get to right um, same thing and of course I'm not deep underwater I'm just in the pool um, native white balance so I'm gonna go through okay this is with the effects and I'm just gonna you guys saw how I did it before so uh, I balance the color right then in this case I added the LUT ahead of time and notice notice the exposure drop there in the in the mids and lows right it starts to get stepped on and then I add a color board and and I have some control in exposure I just brought the mids up right uh, I still kept the lows in just to keep some contrast might pull the brights down just a tad but again uh, it took me, you know, three clicks to get a pretty decent image that holds up. So, um, for the most part, I mean, that's what this tutorial is about. So here's, um, now in this case, I'm not that deep, six, eight feet. Um, and this is, this is 4K. Now, now, right now I'm working in proxy because I didn't want the thing. Let's try to see what happens if I go to the original. Um. <clears throat> and for those of you who are not familiar, Proxy is a smaller file, so it plays back easier um, while you're while you're editing. Um, but uh, that's, again, there's tutorials available. So if you go to the balance color, notice it's kind of rolling out the blue, kind of putting things where they belong. And then if I just add the LUT, um, notice the exposure shift, right? So that's looking pretty good there. And then really all I would go do is add a, a color board and perhaps pull the mids up right brighten it up a little bit um, and boom uh, I've got a, a well corrected image and uh, you know my hair looks a little bit red there is another thing I can go do if I go to the hue and saturation curves and go grab my hair and and it's actually grabbing and it's messing with the skin. So 
Um, we'll save that. But notice that I'm adding more red into the hair. You probably can't see it coming through the web, but uh, you have some other control with within Final Cut. Um, again, here's a another example. Um, I turn the effects off. The, there it is, shot with filter, flat native. Um, and, and in this case, I did a couple other things. Just some other tools in Final Cut. Um, balance of color, right? It's still low saturated. I add the LUT, I get the saturation back, right? But my exposure's gone down. So then I add in a color board, boom, and I do that. And then I just sort of made it a little more cyan with that. Uh, there's a color wheels function. And again, if you want to learn more about that, there's some tutorials available um, that you can you can watch. Um, but let me show you the quick trick. So we have the white balance, and let's say you can't figure out the LUT thing or you don't like it. Um, I think I showed you earlier, but we, we can add an instance of the color board and then go over here to saturation, and I can bring my saturation up to flavor, right? Uh, I can uh, take the master, let's say I want to make it a little warmer or cooler or whatever I want to do, and then I can go back and, and bring my mids up. Uh, if the mids, if your darks get too down here, it doesn't work. So st Caucasian skin should be, if it's properly exposed, should be here, you know, 65, 75-ish, right? Um, that's about where it is here. Um, you know, the white, the, this top thing is the white part of the pool should be kind of, you know, it shouldn't be bright white, but it should be brighter. And of course then at the, the water is running at, you know, 50%. And of course these are the black in the suit. So, uh, a quick fix on, on that. Um, it also, I can one of these numbers and get it to look where I've decreased the blacks a little bit, increased the whites, gave it a little contrast, and I did that without a LUT, right? So that's just with the color wheel. The LUT just sort of took care, it takes care of a bunch of things all at once. Um, my saturation, my exposure, and then I just got to make sure that I bring the level up when I'm done. So there's that. Um, now, Curse of Auto Auto. Um, I went, went to Cozumel, I shot one day with a flat native, and then I got, uh, oh, what do you call it, skeptical, and I thought, well, I better test and see how these other things go, so I, I went through a different set of, combination of settings, you know, I did like, uh, daylight white balance, and then auto color, and then I did, uh, uh, auto white balance and auto color and and the only thing out of any of those auto settings would be is if you did want to set your white balance at 5600k or 6500k at least it's constant the native white balance it's giving me everything that's off the sensor I got to come in here and process it anyway so now my official opinion is you know flat native ISO 800 backscatter filter life's good um, so here's an example though all right so footage comes in like so uh, balance color uh, it, it I used the LUT to deal with some saturation issues um, and I thought oh, okay well you know what I can use the LUT even though it wasn't flat or maybe it was flat point is is I can get some good results. Now here's where GoPro gets confused. And let me see if I can pull some, um, pull some example where it starts to go to pieces. Um, so I don't know if you can see this, but on the lower where I got the rocks and the diver on the right, which is my beautiful wife, and I start to try to correct things, uh, it, it's, it's going to mush. And I'm like, well, I'm just not gonna be able to get that that well um let me go to my markers here uh this 
is an example where I was like auto auto and uh, I was at you know 30 feet or so and I had pretty good light um, and let's get the effect so that's what it came in greenish you know I balance the color and I've got pretty good results without having to do anything else right um, now if I add a lot to it or I add some saturation I could even make those colors pop even better let's just try the, the, the easy way so I'm going to bring up the saturation right so some colors start to come out right and let's got to bring our whites down a little bit and give us a contrast so I can get okay with that um, but I could also try the LUT okay wasn't flat wasn't this yeah well I can dial it so all right well that would be too much but look I can start getting some pretty decent results in here um, and the, the color is still not where I want it so let's go cut white balance on the gray sand and blammo I've got some pretty colors um, and and life is good now I, we have a finesse this this is probably I should probably white balance on this uh, and get back but you get you get the gist um, Here's another example of OK Auto Auto, although um, what happens, there's how it comes in. I go to the white balance, OK, to get the colors in, now the, now the water's going reddish, and I just use a Q and saturation curve uh, to select the colors, right? So I would go select this. And then I adjust it here and you can just play with it and then boom now I got a pretty good looking picture um, now we'll get into one that's like GoPro total confusion we're still having some light here so not hard not hard to deal with in this case um, we'll turn the curve I used color curve so there's the footage, auto, auto, I'm not that deep, a white balance seems to be okay. Um, it's still a little greenish, so I went and I used a function called color curves, and you select these by, by a little pull down once you're in it. And I just selected the cyan, right? It gives me a way to go over here and select what color, and I just pulled the cyan down a little bit and got easily good results. Um, now, that's all on the ones that I could fix using Auto Auto. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, okay, this is where I wanted to go. Now, we get a little deeper here. Things get a little trickier. Um, and I'm in... I call it curse of auto auto land um, again I had to do some things to it if I take off the correction that's what it's coming in everything is blue white balance I get it back but notice here um, I just in in white balancing I've got the colors and stuff crushed so that there's hardly any any detail going on um, so I'm like, all right, I don't, I can't really resurrect that. Um, and if I, I did a little hue and saturation, probably just to pull some magenta out, but that's sort of the, the problem that you run into is that it's getting confused. It's sun went behind the shadow, behind a cloud and now you sh shadow light and, and so on and so forth. Now this another example um, auto auto and uh, we're again not that deep and I was able to get an okay correction okay until 
Let me see where I can get where we're cruising through the reef. Give me a second here. Um, oh, yeah, this. So <laughs> here's the way this came in. Actually, let me see if I can play this. Um, so it's on a drift dive down in Cozumel. Um, light's kind of funky-ish gray. Now look what happens. I go to a backlight thing. GoPro gets confused, doesn't know what we're looking at. Things are just a mess. Um, now, if I just tried to white balance this, um, I'm just going to do the white balance. Look what happens. Right? So I'm like, okay, <laughs> I got all sorts of stuff in the file, and that's weird. So I had to go start doing some other things, and I finally got to the point, and I'm not going to step you through all of it. Was that, you know, I'm really going to have to uh, uh, try to think of some cool treat, creative treatment. So this is in the same shot, just panning a different way. And uh, let's see if I can back up here. Um, but you, you can see the camera's shifting whatever it's doing, and it's making it near impossible. So curse of the auto auto doesn't mean you can't get to good images. Uh, doing that it just takes some doing so I did the Janet James Bond version look on that but you can see things start going to pieces lights coming in the front of the lens it should you know now GoPro's confused and when GoPro gets confused GoPro just seems to want to just mess up the world right crush all the colors mess up whatever white balance it has and, and it does it at the most inopportune time. Um, now, there's a, uh, here's an auto auto that worked out okay because it had light. There was light on the subject. So basically a balanced color and then uh, the, the C started going magenta. So I just selected the magenta, right? And adjusted it, watch what happens. So the, it selected, it gave me the middle dot. I'm just dialing it back to blue. I can make it go more teal, you know. Um, there we go. But, but really, we just want to get it to be blue, not red. No light, no nothing. Available light worked out pretty good. Um, again, this is our problem child. Um, now here's an example from the Bahamas trip. And I don't see any comments yet, so I'm just going to keep talking. Um, this is on full auto. Um, below, well, let's say we were about 30 feet. It's saturated, but um, I don't know how well this is working, but there's a little yellow eel. And then, uh, man, I've got some beautiful color in this. And I was just like, wow, that's pretty darn slick. And, and uh, all I did, I, I didn't do anything to that, right? I mean, I could go through and balance a color, but it, it's, it's already there. Only thing I'm, you know, might even have to just pull down the saturation in the mids just a touch. Um, but, I mean, it was rock solid right out of the camera. Again. 10% of the time of everything I got, I, I would get something like that. Um, this here is auto-auto, uh, uh, right? So I've corrected it. That's how it looked before. Um, boom. Auto-auto. Um, so skin's green. The, the ocean starts to go magenta. I balance the color. I still got a little magenta, but I got green skin. So I go in with the hue and saturation curves, select the green skin, add some more red to it. Um, boom, boom, boom. See, I'm, you can see her skin. It's green, green there. And I just kind of made it more fleshy. And then I desaturated it a tad, and I got a pretty good-looking image without a whole lot of effort, 
Okay. Now, thing is, whenever you make a correction like this, you kind of have to watch it play because you might have it fixed for one thing, and then then later in the shot, it's going to change. So, um, there you go. Um, this was when I was having camera issues down in the Bahamas. Um, my shark, and um, I'm going to show you. So that it came in like that, probably. 60 feet maybe uh, so I go through the steps and let me just turn them off and we'll step through the process um, so balance of color that gets me to an adequate picture right and that's probably indicative of what I was seeing at the time um, but I think I'm going to add a little more saturation into the water a little bit more into the color and I started doing and say okay let's I added some color wheel correction where I took the mids into the blues and I warmed up the shadows a little bit um, and then I sort of messed with the exposure in another instance you can see where I'm taking the whites back up and moving it up a little bit and then I thought and I want to go James Bond so I did added a plugin called WVL Cine, which I think is another free one. And I tweaked the mids and the highs and shadows a little bit more. Um, and then I added some color curves where I just sort of adjusted the contrast. I didn't really adjust the color. Here's a, a quick trip. If you want to warm things up, add red, add green, right? And, and you'll get to a warmer thing. Um, so at any rate, that's an old film printing trick. But then I got my shark to look how I wanted it to look. Um, and that's kind of the key takeaway. I mean, if you try to get it to look exactly how you did or how you saw it, you might not get there, but the idea is to get it to look realistic and pretty. And and I'm all for that. Um, it's just such a cool world down there. What did I forget to show you? Oh, this. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, again, and I can't recall. I think I was in Native White Balance. And then GoPro color, but I'm not really for sure. But this is an instance again. So that's native white balance. Things seem to come in. Okay, it probably looked like that. Um, but but you know what? I remember it being a lot more pretty and colorful. And so look at that. Now I add the LUT. Um, and away we go. And again, in case you forgot, I just grab the custom LUT. And then I select the... Uh, Apex Protune, and then I can dial it to flavor, right? Easy, easy, sneezy. So, um, yeah, I don't see any comments here. So that's what I've got for us there. Um, I've got to give a shameless plug. Well, first of all, i got to thank my dive instructor, Tom Lemke, and um, Tamara Roll down in the Bahamas who made all of this underwater stuff possible um, and all of my guys down at A1 Scuba, Sean and Brett and Austin and Shane and Bob and Eric and, and Casey and uh, they're just great people so if you're thinking about getting certified man go there get signed up get in the water and that's that so yeah they have a, their websites A1 Scuba Dot com. Um, so, yep, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me with me being technical director and everything, I just go to the logo and say we're starting over. Um, yeah. So that's kind of the, the overview. Um, I'm hoping on our next dive trip, if we can ever get out, that I will be a little more organized, and uh, and I'm going to shoot all sorts of stuff flat and native, and I'm going to do one day of auto auto so I can have some more 
curse of the auto auto but um you know again there's there's plenty of apps there's plenty of things that that make okay you upload your video and they they correct it and that's cool whatever i'm just showing what works for me and uh and uh, you know, getting getting to a good looking image the fastest way possible that I can put on YouTube, share with my friends, and looks good on the TV and doesn't look bad. It's kind of my thing. Now, if I was doing this for professional work, uh, I probably wouldn't be using a GoPro, and uh, and then I would have codecs. That's the file type um, that that I can um, correct easily. But uh, to GoPro's credit, I am always amazed as what i what i get back uh from that i mean this thing is like this big man you know I, 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 it's just crazy um any rate there is a um oh yeah back to the thing there's another filter thing called the polar pro and um and i didn't use it on my housing it's an isota so I didn't use it on this because it would rattle. Um, and I've got, I could never get the rig to work so I could get the light to be on the arm to put it where I want because the hole's on the wrong side. I needed the hole on this side to get it. I did get uh, to get that done, but I do have it set so I can go like this and fit on top of the camera. However, then I got this top heavy beast and it's clunky and and uh, when I get in the water again, right now I have the f filter flipping up. Uh, if I did want to put the light there, I would set it so that the filter flips from the side. Um, but I gotta tell you that that's been a really cool filter. The tests that I did with the Polar Pro, at least in the pool and, and with Mary's camera, worked out great. The idea was getting more red into the data even if it doesn't look that way when it comes out as you saw uh we're able to then get to a correction so um i wish i had one. Oh, here it is yeah 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 curse of auto auto so uh, again i can get there it's just weird i mean this, uh, oh so you're not even looking at this um yeah <laughs> sorry about that so we'll just have to cut that part out this is what i was thinking i was showing you but i didn't uh, uh have it lined up but you get into some of this stuff where the camera just doesn't know what to think it's backlit it's got all sorts of issues going on you try to get to a white balance um okay everything's purple we can correct that just a little bit As a matter of fact i, I will just show you the and saturation curves now, less is more in this world so i'm selecting that it says it's there i'm just gonna make the water bluish green so there's without it there's with it simple um so that's that okay well sorry about that uh i'm gonna have to fire the technical director for not doing the switch uh yeah here's another how am I going to get this fixed? And it's just a slight backlight coming in. And GoPro says, I don't know if I like that. Everything is done. Whereas um, I'm guessing that when I do uh, uh, native white balance in uh, flat color, that I mean, there's nothing that the camera can confuse and, and hit me on. So I'm expecting to get some better results with that. Um, yeah, now, out of water, uh, GoPro's Auto Auto, pretty darn, I mean, pretty pretty darn flawless. You know, it's just that once you go down under water, uh, all the variables start kicking in. So, right on. Well, and uh, we got our, looks like our buddy Rob. Uh, Rob turned in. Wow, good. Get back into diving. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, thanks for watching, Rob. Um, yeah, no, it's uh, it changed my life. And 
if I had my ways about it, you know, I'm like, I, I would just like to dive and take pictures and put up cool little videos, but uh, got to work and uh, got to do that, so. <sighs> oh, that one hurt. Sorry. Um, don't do that. That's all I got for now. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye-bye.